Welcome back, everyone, to Vox Markets. My name is Paul Hill, and I'm by popular demand. I'm delighted again to be able to speak to CEO Harry Adams of Argentex, a specialist provider of foreign exchange services to corporate fund managers and high net worth individuals. So welcome, Harry. Morning, Paul. How are you? Yeah, very good. Well, obviously, the business is doing very well. And a big congrats on yesterday's um, positive trading update and increased guidance. Maybe we can start there. I don't suppose you could sort of like remind investors of the company's sort of key USPs, how it's winning market share against the mainstream banks and also sort of enhancing its sort of share of wallet. Sure, yeah. So Argentex uh, operate in quite a niche area of the foreign exchange and payments market. So um, our clients tend to be a little bit more sophisticated. So they tend to be larger SMEs and sort of smaller institutions. And, you know, still to this day, 85% of this market is uh, swept up by the bank. So, uh, you know, there's a huge um, opportunity for us there. And, and clients would use us for, for various reasons. Obviously, you know, price is, is the easiest. You know, we don't have to work particularly hard to beat uh, the mainstream banks on price. Um, but, you know, really it's a service. You know, clients will give us a go on uh, on the price. They can see that we're offering a, a far more tailored service, whether that's a, uh, you know, really sort of digging into their, their hedging policies, um, giving them the advice on uh, on, on the currency, um, and, and sometimes, you know, starting to change uh, and alter structures or the way they've uh, they, they've executed their, their foreign exchange in the past. So, you know, we're, we're incredibly... Um, uh, so I say it's a bit niche area, but uh, but a huge market. Mm. Well, I'm guessing if you were sort of like putting yourself sort of like if I was sort of Unilever, I would have a big team of um, of, of treasury specialists. But if I'm actually a much smaller business, a SME, for instance, I couldn't afford a 150 thousand pound guy to sort out my forex. You guys presumably help me with that tailored service. Exactly. So you know, part of the service is more sort of a, a private bank. Yeah. Um, sort of level of service so we really understand you know what the client needs are um, we understand sort of the risk appetite of those clients because often that that differs um, and we have a, a, a you know one dealer that has 10 years worth of experience in the foreign exchange market giving the advice to the client and, and ultimately being sort of an outsourced treasury foreign exchange specialist to to, to those businesses yeah well, you seem to be the sort of the best crept secret in the uh, in the UK mid market. Now you're branching out abroad as well. And I saw and noticed in your sort of your trading update that you're having some pretty good success out in um, in Holland in Amsterdam. Yeah, so look, I mean, part of Brexit, we had to uh, get a, leg, a regulation in uh, in Europe. So um, there were various different routes we could take. Um, we decided to go down sort of a very rigorous exercise and, and, and be regulated in uh, in Holland, which uh, really is the sort of gold standard of regulation across Europe. Now, you know, that was painful, I'll be honest with you, really painful. But what that's now done is uh, given the fact that it is a credible gold standard regulation, it allows us to seamlessly passport um, through sort of the, the member countries. So, you know, we, we set up the Netherlands as Europe HQ, but you know, ultimately, well, currently we are fully focusing on that Dutch market. And it, it's great to see, you know, the, the e-money license that we achieved earlier on this year, we're only one of 10 institutions in, in Holland with an e-money license. So um, it really is a huge selling point for us. And, uh, you know, we're, we're getting some really good attraction on that already. Fabulous. Yeah, I suppose uh, it, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, doesn't it? When you sort of like have to go through those painful regulatory processes. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure my compliance department would, uh, would agree on that. You know, they pull some pretty long nights, but, uh, you know, credit to them. It, it yeah. Really was a effort. And, and also in the trading update, you, you talked about an improving mix, sort of like shifting more towards the sort of structured products. And, and just for investors, is that sort of like the derivatives and options and stuff like that? Yeah, so often, you know, when we are out on the road and we're telling investors that we're selling options, suddenly, you know, a few eyebrows get raised. But just to be very clear, we don't sell options. We don't write mm. options. Um, we broke options. So we're, yeah. we're, we're it's exactly the same way. It's all match principle. We sit in the middle and, and take, a, take a slice. So uh, really that sort of uh, came about from client demand. You know, we've, we've never wanted to shoehorn products into clients. This is very much clients coming to us and asking you know, whether we're able to offer some sort of outperformance uh, trades in the market. You know, clearly, we need to ensure that uh, you know, these products are being sold 
appropriately uh, to the right clients. And, uh, you know, we, we make sure that we're not trading anything overly leveraged. So we, we don't touch TAFs and mm. TARNs, which, uh, you know, a, a quick Google search will show you that, you know, they come with a huge amount of risk. So um, it really is just a, you know, another level of service that we can offer to the more sophisticated clients. So it, it, it's, it's gaining traction. It's going well. Yeah, so I guess really what it means is that the mid, mid and mid and small size companies can get a international type of, but uh, you know, sort of forex sort of service with all the products if they if they choose to want it. It's according to their particular needs. Exactly, it's, you know, I mean, it's incredibly popular when we're sort of reaching new highs or lows on a on a currency uh, pair. So, you know, sterling dollar as an example, when we were going through that mini budget phase and, and we we're staring down the barrel of potentially parity on on cable you know clients had to act you know they they didn't want to sort of uh, you know, lose all of their margin by by not acting so by taking out some very basic options they're able to protect the the rates where it was at the moment but also you know ensure that if there were to be a bounce and clearly there was a bounce that they could get that upside gain so uh, you know the, that that's why we're sort of offering these products is it's not to try and beat the market it's to try and make sure the clients can participate yeah well it gives you that extra usp now just in the in your online uh, platform i didn't again i noticed in the um, in the trading update you're winning more clients actually you, you were at the half year as well and that sort of continued and you just take us through how that's developing that sort of tech roadmap and and how clients are taking to doing um, sort of self service online yeah, sure. So pre-2022, really, you know, our tech offering was fairly basic, archaic. It, it allowed clients to execute. That was that. Um, we uh, we brought in David Christie, uh, sort of COO, to absolutely overhaul our, uh, our, our um, tech offering. You know, David's been with us now for a year. In that year, we've doubled the size of our technology team. And, you know, by Q1 next year, it, it would have been tripled since David started. So um, there has been a clear shift in strategy over the last sort of 18 months or so. Um, it's something that you know I, I knew we had to improve on. I'm happy to say that the products that we have out there are absolutely outstanding. They are market leading. Um, there was a, a demonstration done to the whole team a couple of weeks ago and I was sat at the back and uh, you know had hairs on the back of my, my neck go up because it, it genuinely looks incredible. Uh, very, very proud of of what they've done there. So you know, the, the product sells itself. You know, we, we, we're not actually uh, pushing it out in front of clients quite yet in terms of, right, here is the technology platform, go, go take it. We are still going through the same process of how we onboard our clients, which is very heavy lifting, if I'm honest, and that, that is starting to shift as well. Um, but, you know, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. And, and just to see that those numbers, you know, they're not only the the take up is ticking up, but the uh, the notional um, trade sizes are, are ticking up, and of course the the revenue ticks up with that. So um, it, it's been it's been a really really pleasing exercise over the last twelve months, and uh, you know I, I think genuinely it's just a sort of the, the tip of the iceberg of where we can go with that. Great, and will that be able to re be rolled out across sort of like Holland and um, in other international like Australia as well, or ultimately? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, across um, Europe and, and Australia is, is, is the sort of clear strategy here. Um, we're looking to ensure that, you know, there are a few sort of, um, sort of, you know, obviously the, the language changes, being they, they mm. one of the differences across across the platform. But, you know, Australia, as an example, it, the regulation over there is slightly different to what, what it is in the UK and, and, and Europe. So there had to be a few tweaks in, in the platform, but you know, th these can be done you know, relatively quickly and now they're being done in-house rather than uh, leaning on an external provider that uh, we, we did up to sort of the turn of um, last year. Okay. And then sort of like over the next sort of 12 months in terms of new products and investments and stuff like that, is it all real sort of like, you know, organic growth? Um, yeah, I mean, all, organic growth in, in a way, but, you know, don't forget, we've invested heavily in the mm technology over the last 12 months and, and our people so you know organics one word but you know we said that we we were sort of slightly behind the curve in in our product offering in our technology uh, we're now ramping that up we're already starting to see a return on that investment and there's no reason why we uh why we would put the brakes on that you know we're we're mindful that uh you know we message the market 22 and 23 will be a, a, a kind of 
an investment period. We'll be coming out of that investment period um, towards sort of mid to end next year. And that's when we hopefully see not only the client numbers, the revenue ticking up, but also, you know, those margins starting mm. to uh, creep back up to where we've historically seen them. So, you know, the, the high mid thirties is, is sort of where we're, where we're aiming to be in sort of 20, 24 onwards. Good. And then I noticed, um, I mean, singers haven't, the sort of house broker haven't actually updated their numbers. They'll do that in January when the, the full year trading update uh, happens, but they're sort of like pitching in for sort of sales of, uh, of 47 for the end for the 12 month period ending 2022 and then moving up to, to sort of 50 for 2023, 50 million turnover. Um, I know I sort of like um, asked you a sort of uh, a difficult question last time, but I'll ask it again. So apologies. This is just broadly. I mean, how, what, what sort of like sort of shape and size of the business could could this get to? In I mean, nobody's going to hold you to it in five years time, 10 years time. Where, where What was the sort of ambition of the board? Yeah, I mean, so you know, the ambition of the board is to sort of well, to become a, a full service um, currency and solutions provider to, to corporates and institutions over time. Now, we had a figure in mind that we wanted to hit uh, within two or three years. Um, you know, we are pushing that figure up, um, get on the on the back of a uh, you know a, a great 2022, and mm. seeing that the adoption of uh, you know some of those uh, investments are, are really starting to take off. Um, so where where do we go from there? Look, you know, there's endless opportunities. You know, we still want to stick to that sort of three pillar um, strategy of people, technology and geography. And, and, and all we really need to do is demonstrate that we're able to uh, return the investment on the uh, on the tech in the UK and across Europe. And then we'll start pushing it out to different geographies. So it's, it's incredibly scalable. Um, yes, of course, you know, there will be more products coming on, on, you know, on the way. Um, and that's really gravy over the next uh, two years or so. But it's uh, it, it is very exciting, and, and you're you're starting to see you know there are a few um, competitors that we have in this market. Everyone's doing well. It's great to see. I um, mean, it really sort of demonstrates to you, you know what the size of that opportunity is. You know, to re to revert back to what I said earlier, still eighty five percent of our clients are are still trading with their bank. So not not our clients, but the market is, uh, are trading with the bank. So you know, even even if we're um, increasing our market share by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, it makes a considerable difference on the top line. Yeah, it moves the needle significantly. Yeah. <laughs> I would um, just highlight to investors that, uh, as I say, singers haven't actually updated their um, or upgraded their numbers, and they'll do that in January, but they still have a, a target price of £1.60. My, my fair value for the company is at £1.80, and I think the shares are about £1.30, one thirty-five this morning, so uh, still a significant upside. And um, if the uh, the long-term vision of the board happens, then uh, let's see where we get to. will be very interesting. Um, just finally then, so news flow, we've, is that is that going to be, is the, the, the trading update going to be mid-end of January, something like that, is it sort of... Yeah, so I think we'll go a little bit later than our normal trading update because we want to get a bit more uh, meat on the bones. Yeah, we were forced into the trading update on Monday due to uh, you know the the, the ten percent rule. Um, that's great. The market uh, obviously reacted well to that, but we we want to get a bit more meat on the bones. So we, we'll probably go out towards the end of January this time rather than early January, um, and then we'll try to get everything in line uh, and go back out to market before Easter for, for the full year results. Fabulous. Well, as I say, big congrats on the um, on the 2022 numbers and setting up for a really positive uh, 2023. And, you know, just keep up the great work. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you, Harry. Cheers. Take care.